So today I am doing a book review and that's going to be Needful Things by Stephen King. This was published in 1992 and is a horror novel. Now I listened to the audiobook version and I loved it. I loved it so much because it was Stephen King narrating it. Now, I mean, I love him. He's my favorite author, blah, blah, blah. We all know this, but I love any author who reads their own audio version because there's just like, there's something about it. Like you, cause who knows the voice better than the author? You know what I mean? And sometimes even when you're reading something, you don't necessarily get it across how you want it to be or sound. I mean, yeah, there's plenty of descriptions that you hear in your head the way the author intended, but there's just those some moments where the only way to know what it was really supposed to be like is if it's voiced and the author's that person. You know what I'm saying? Am I making any sense to you guys? I hope I am because that's what I'm just trying to say is that any audio version book with the author reading it, it's just, it's a beautiful thing to me. Anywho, so Stephen King did the audio book for Needful Things. It, it was just because of that alone. I loved it. Just that much more. Before I continue, please like and subscribe if we are jiving. You know, do you feel like we're connecting on some kind of level? Then please subscribe if you haven't already. Now, this story starts off with a store called Needful Things. It is brand new. It just swept into town and the owner is Leland Gaunt. Now, it seems like a secondhand store or a like old vintage store, but as people start coming in, they all seem to find something that is rare or just beautiful, a hobby, nostalgic, like all kinds of reasons for people wanting the things that they find in Leland Gaunt's shop. And while Gaunt does take money for the items he sells you, that's only half of the price. The other price is supposed to be in the form of a favor or a prank as he likes to put it. Now, I forgot to mention in the beginning, which I keep forgetting to do this in my videos, there is a warning, some trigger warnings here. There is animal abuse and there is suicide. Um, more specifically, child suicide. I know that can kind of be like a spoiler, but you know, that is kind of one of my personal triggers. So I want to put it out there. So some of the harmless pranks, like throwing mud on your sheets, uh, putting up pink slips in someone's house that doesn't really mean anything. And then we have the more serious pranks involving slashing someone's tires and throwing rocks into someone's house, breaking all their windows and their appliances in their house, you know. Then we have Sheriff Pangborn or Alan Pangborn. And he's, he has a very, he's very protective of his town and he he knows that something's wrong he can just feel this storm that's coming he just he just has this feeling in his gut that the town isn't right and as people start doing the pranks that Leland Gaunt has asked of them things start to spiral because they're doing pranks to people they don't know and then those people assume it's someone else and then they have their own pranks while also seeking revenge and you know chaos starts to unravel pretty quickly and then suddenly Gaunt's store is no longer open but he's around he's he's sticking around to watch watch the show now I really enjoyed the story and I just thought it was a very unique story I gave this four stars because there were points that were really confusing like I did get confused with names and who is who because some of them didn't have like much of a personality change from someone else that I was having a hard time and like I said Stephen King has a habit of saying someone's full name and then sometimes just their first name or just their last name and he toggles between the two and I start to get confused of who he's talking about just because he doesn't stick with one name and it drives me nuts but so I was getting a little bit confused with that um but he does do a great job of of adding multiple people and have it make sense and all kind of like work together because this is a small town so even though I was getting confused you still get this vibe you still you still start to understand like the atmosphere of this town. And I think he does such an amazing job at that 
specifically. And I did, I thought this was a great story. I loved the ending. I know some people might feel a little differently about that. I really enjoyed how the ending worked because when it came down to it, you know, they weren't trying to like, to defeat this evil being. It was just like, get the hell out of my face. <laughs> you know, don't mess with me kind of thing. It wasn't, it wasn't like we must destroy and like, bleh, you know, it wasn't one of those. It was just like, you know, get out of my life and my business kind of thing. And you know, I liked that. And I liked how it ended and you know, it was a good ending. And sometimes you never know that can always be a hit or miss, but I did really enjoy the ending to this. Also, before I end this, I will be doing a book versus movie on this later, probably in May. Uh, yeah, it, I'm just telling you right now, it's probably gonna be more of a rant than anything because I have words, but I'll save it for that. So if you have read this book and you'd like to know what I think of the movie adaptation, stick around, keep your eyes open for that for next month. I post Sundays, sometimes Tuesdays and Thursdays. I hope that you are sticking around and enjoying this journey with me. Thank you.